What's going on everybody, James here from Artificial Entertainment and welcome to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. And in this one we have a quick video just showing you how to be able to set up a really nice timer in your game, so let's go ahead and dive in. Now the bulk of our code is going to be set up within our game mode, so for me that's going to be third person, blueprints, and then BP third person game mode, double click open that up. And then we're just going to click on open full blueprint editor. This way we have the graph that we can actually start adding information in. And speaking of graphs, we'll go ahead and pull up the event graph. Now, the first thing we're going to want to add here is going to be two variables. So we'll just click the plus sign twice. And then we'll go ahead and rename this first one to timer seconds. And then the second one we're going to take and do the same thing, but it's going to be timer minutes. So this way we have a individual variable for each of these. And we're going to take the boolean and change it to a float on both. Now, using alt and control, we're going to drag out a getter and setter node for each of these so we're going to go timer seconds with alt and get the setter node and then do the same thing by holding control and do the same thing on timer minutes with both so this way we have a getter and setter for both of these now what we're going to do is off of the getter node of each of these we're going to add an add node so we'll go off of both of these here with an add node and connect it into the set node and now both of these values are going to be different. We're just setting this up so that way we can easily drag and drop our pieces in later. So we'll go ahead and we'll set these values really quickly. So the timer seconds, we're going to set to 0 0.01. And the timer minutes, we're going to set 1. Highlight the timer minutes section. And then we're just going to drag it off to the side for right now. Because what we're going to do instead is we're going to go right click and add a custom event in really quickly. And we're going to call this start timer. And we're going to drag it off. And then we're going to pull off here. And we're going to also get a set timer by event. One of my favorite nodes, actually my favorite node in the entire engine. If you guys watch my video, it's no secret. But yeah, this is my favorite node. It's a controllable event tick function. It's awesome. So we'll go ahead and we're going to set the time here to 0 0.01. So just take everything out. And we're also going to make sure that looping is checked as well. And we'll take the execution pin and plug it into the setter for the timer second. Now what we're also going to want to do is we're going to highlight the timer second getter node and control D to duplicate it. And we're also going to get a branch with B and left click. We're going to take the timer seconds and we're going to see if it's equal or greater to 60. As we all know, 60 seconds equals a minute. So once it's equal to 60 or greater than, we're going to make sure that it starts doing something a little different. Now, the reason I use the equal to or greater than rather than just the standard equal to is because this is going to be firing off every 0 0.01 seconds, so long as your frame rate is able to allow for that. And realistically, if your game is running at 60 frames per second or more, you're not going to have any problems with this. But however, because it's running so quickly, for it to determine exactly when 60.00 is there and ensure that it's going to execute that branch condition properly is not consistent in how it operates. So this is the reason why I use the greater than or equal to because 60.01, 60.02, they're both greater than 60, but you'll never actually notice the transition. It'll look like it's cycling right off, but realistically, there might be a slight delay that's just completely unnoticeable to the human eye. So if this is true, what we'll do is we're going to take the setter node for timer seconds. We're just going to highlight it and then control D to duplicate it. And then off of true, we'll plug this in so it sets it to zero. And then we'll take the timer minutes uh, code here that we've made and we'll plug it in as the next thing. So basically what's happening is that if the if it is equal to 60 seconds, then we're going to set the timer for seconds back to zero and then add one to the minute timer. Because, you know, again, 60 seconds equals one minute. So the way this code is going to work is that the whenever this event is called, it's going to set the timer by event and loop it every 0 0.01 seconds, adding 0 0.01 to our timer of timer seconds. And then as long as it's less than 60, it's just going to execute this over and over again. Once it is 60, it's going to go and set our timer seconds to zero and then set our minute timer to one and then reset itself. So one more thing we're going to go ahead and add is another custom event here. And we're going to call this timer reset. And then we're just going to drag off of here and we're going to put clear and invalidate timer by handle. And then the handle type is going to be the return value from our set timer by event. So this way, whenever we call this event, it's going to stop looping everything here. Now, there's two different ways you can set this up. The first way with the way it is right now is only going to stop it and give you the whatever the timer ended on. So if it ended on two seconds and, you know, whatever milliseconds or two minutes and 45 seconds, that's what's going to display on the widget once we create it and add it in. However, you can go ahead and grab a timer seconds and then shift click to get both of these, control D to duplicate them, 
hook them up to the clear and invalidate timer by handle, keeping them at zero. And that way, whenever this is called, it's going to stop this calling and as well as set everything back to zero. So now that we have our code set up here, let's go ahead and create a quick widget that we can then use to be able to have it displayed on our viewport. So I'm going to go to my content, right click, go to user interface and then widget blue click on user widget and we'll just name this timer then double click and open it up now the first thing we're going to want to do is add in a canvas panel just drag and drop that right in there and then we're also going to search for text and we're just going to grab this standard text and we're going to grab three of these now also make sure that their anchors are set to the top middle of the screen as this is going to be where our timer is going to be placed for our game. Now, once the anchors are set, we're going to go ahead and also make sure to change the text blocks. So we're going to go to the text and change one, uh, this one to zero. So it's just zero on the, on the uh, numpad here. And then do the same thing for the one on the other side. And in the middle here, we're just going to add a colon. So this way we have all the pieces we need for our timer's clock function. Now, if we scroll in here, we're also going to take this and kind of close it off. So this way it's even on both sides as best as we can get it on all of these. This way, the padding and the orientation aren't going to be weird when everything actually aligns up when you add it to your viewport. So now everything is anchored and sized, we can go ahead and start positioning everything. And the easiest way to do that is to just drag everything off into space, so where they're kind of, you know, close to each other, and then just zoom in and start pressing everything together. Now, two things to keep in mind is that you do want these to be close. You don't want them to be far apart because when you get to the value that's a double digit, like 10, it's going to push out this way, not this way. So the padding and the spacing in between the zero and the colon is always going to be the same. So we want to make sure that this is even and tight in on both sides. And if it's not, we can just reorient and reposition things just like so until we get something we're roughly happy with, something like this. I know it's not perfect, but it will do. So we'll go ahead and we'll click compile and we'll save this. And then we'll go ahead and click on the minutes one. So this is going to be the zero that's on the left side. And then we're going to go to the content text, go down to bind, and we're going to create a binding. Taking the text input here, dragging it back, and then dragging off here. And then we're going to go and type in cast to BP third person game mode. And we're going to go off of the object and type in get game mode. And then off of the uh, output here for as BP third person game mode, we're just going to go ahead and get minutes. You can just type in get minutes and it'll get timer minutes because of the smart search. And then we'll just take the output here, plug it into the return value. And it'll automatically give you a two text double, which is going to mean that if it's a uh, like a double digit value, it'll actually input it without clipping or cutting it off. And because it's a float value, it'll generally also come with a decimal value as well if you have it set. But for this, we actually won't see that decimal value. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and compile and save, go back to our designer here. And then we're going to go to the seconds counter and we're going to do the same thing. So go to the content text and then we're going to create a new binding, taking the input here, dragging it back, cast to BP third person game mode. And then off of the object, get game mode. And then off of the output here for BP third person game mode, we're just going to get seconds this time because this is going to be the seconds timer. Plug it into the return node here and then we are good to go. So we'll compile and save. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go and add it to our viewport as well as create a key that we can use to start and stop the timer. So I'm going to go to my third person blueprints BP third person character and open this up and bring up the event graph. Now I'm going to go ahead and find an empty space here and I'm just going to go keyboard event E keyboard event F. And then what I'll do is off of pressed cast to B third person game mode object get game mode and you can make this a variable if you wanted to um realistically i'm just going to copy and paste this way it's just the same code it really doesn't matter a cast function for something this simple isn't going to slow down your games you don't need to make an interface you can if you want to but realistically a cast function is going to work just fine because all we're doing is e pressed We'll pull off of as BP third person game mode and go start timer. And then for F pressed, and we'll do the same thing at the bottom here, but we're going to go reset timer. So our timer reset. So this way we can start it and stop it with a key, uh, with the key press. Now, uh, we also need to make sure to add this to our viewport here. So we're going to right click and go event begin play, drag off here, create widget. And then the class that we're going to use is going to be our widget timer that we created. And then the return value we'll take off the execution pin. I'm sorry. Um, and we're just going to add to viewport and then take the return value and plug it into the target just like that. All right. So now if we compile, save, minimize, and if I hit play, you'll see that our timer is at the top there. But if I press E on the keyboard here, our timer immediately starts. And as you can see, the spacing between the colon and one, two, all of these values is exactly the same. It pushes outwards, not inwards. So this is where that spacing really, really does matter. 
Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this is operating at a basically a speed of 0 0.01. Right now, my frame rate is at 35, 40 ish frames per second, you know, kind of dropping down. This is going to mean that my timer isn't necessarily going to function on the exact same premise of a stopwatch. But if your game is operating at around 60 frames per second, you will not see this issue. So what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and time lapse the video. So this way you guys can actually see what's going to happen when it transitions over from like 55, 56, you know, all the way and gives you that first minute value. So that you guys can really see the way that this is going to transition over. All right, so my GPU has made it around. I apologize for the delay, guys. The GPU is struggling there, but as you can see, we're at our CPU, sorry, um, laptop and all. But we have uh, 59 rolling around and let's see, 60 hits. You don't even see it out. I'm pretty sure it was 60.0102 there for a second, even with my low frame rate and you could still barely notice it. But now we can see we have one minute. Now you can change these values a little bit however you want. Like right now, the one might be a little too close. So it might be good to maybe separate it out, make it into a double digit value. But realistically, the timer can be started and stopped as well whenever you want. So I can go ahead and E to start it and then F to stop it. It resets it back to zero because that's the code that we have set. Once we press this button, it resets everything back to zero. So you can start and stop this whenever you like, making it a very simple um, and easy to start and stop code. So this type of timer you guys can go ahead and use. You can use it in like trial runs to be able to get best times. You can also use it as like, uh, you know, timers for something to happen. If you don't do this within 30 seconds, something is going to happen. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do with the information that happens here because you have it all saved in your game mode so you can go ahead and call it and use it for your value you know you can use it as a bull value for something there's a lot of cool things you can do with the timer and integrate it into your actual game mechanics just by setting it up with this very very simple system but that's going to close out for today's video guys i hope you guys enjoyed if you guys have any questions concerns comments whatever please hit me up either in the comment section or in the channel discord i monitor both very carefully and please keep those suggestions going guys every one you throw out it gets added to a list and i'm going to be doing every single one of them so please keep them coming i'm loving some of the things you guys are letting me uh you know know you want to see so please keep that that stuff coming guys but if you like today's video please hit that like and subscribe button it really really does help um but that's all for today guys and as always stay animated